What's one of the most common things people talk about when it comes to PvP MMOs? Even just knowing that the open world PvP is a thing normally breeds the idea of full loot for people. And it makes sense. A lot of gamers don't want to spend hours or days on end farming for something for it to only get taken from you in less than 5 minutes. Some games in this genre were way more hardcore than others. Darkfall I would say is one of those, alongside Mortal. But there were ones that incorporated safe zones or yellow zones for example, such as EVE Online or Albion Online. In these zones you would normally be safe from losing your items or there would be heavy restrictions on aggressors. But even still the vast majority of the gaming community tends to stay away from these types of games. So I've been playing Glory of Victus for about a week and a half now after jumping back in from a two year hiatus and one of the things I remembered getting questions for on my last live stream of this game is how the looting system works. Glory of Victus is a PvP MMO but on top of that it heavily focuses around faction based PvP. You do have your designated safe zones which is normally around your capital and even your non loot zones which you could in theory still be attacked in but nobody can loot you. But what happens when you step outside these zones or let's say decide to join a world event or siege event that pops up? You may not know this, but Gloria Victus is one of the safest PvP MMOs that you could possibly come across. Let me explain how this stuff works. Let's say you decide to leave the safety of the yellow and green zones and go attack one of the enemy faction castles. What happens? Well if no ongoing siege event is happening then it would just be a regular type of PvP siege without loot protection. And you'll have to attack one of the minor capture points before attacking the main one. But if it's an actual siege event that gets assigned by the game, then the area becomes a non-loot zone. These events happen randomly throughout the day for different target locations on the map to promote PvP, and right after the Valley of Death battlegrounds that spawn throughout the day as well. That means that everyone that shows up for the siege, whether you teleport in because you will get that option as attacker or defender when it pops, or you manually travel to it, and this is all happening in the open world, no instance or sharding. You can die as much as you want, kill as many people as you want, your stuff is completely safe. Now when the event is over, which means either all the attackers are wiped from the area or the zone is captured, after about 2 or 3 minutes and you'll see this on the buff, the place will go back to its regular state of being loot based. And there's not only PvP events like this, but there's also a handful of player versus environment events that trigger, like the Sea Wraith and Frontier Pass. When the queue starts for the PvP battleground and that event pops, that area of course is fully non-loot and you'll be able to teleport in. Granted, there will be PvE events that you could still die and be looted from, and if you're going to one manually in the open world that's not in a safe zone, of course by default that would be gear loot based. But let me explain why Gloria Victus is one of the least dangerous PvP MMOs even when you're in danger of losing gear. So let's say you decide to go AFK outside a safe zone, maybe you want to do some fishing in a really good spot or AFK mine on the front lines, what happens when you go down? Gloria Victus goes off of what's known as a point system. The second someone starts looking in your inventory to potentially take something, a timer starts. Or it might actually start the moment you go down. At the end of that timer, your stuff is safe. And of course if you respawn before anyone can try to take anything, your stuff is also safe. It doesn't automatically drop on death and make you run back for it. And reviving someone back from being knocked out is possible if you get there quickly enough before they have to respawn. So in PvP fights, large scale sieges for example, you'll find it very common that your faction members are going to try to push up the front line when so many of you go down. This is to allow medics to try and revive you, but also to prevent the enemy from looting your corpse before you can respawn, which should only take about 10 to 15 seconds. If someone gets to you, the point system comes into play. Only one person can be looking in someone's inventory to loot something, and gear pieces take a significant amount of points to loot. Meaning that no one will ever be able to loot more than one piece of gear, and maybe like one stack of items or resource at a time. So they might only be able to take your helmet and bandages for example. This means that you will never ever be in danger of losing your entire gear set or items when dying without restrictions like in other games. On top of this, this game is very faction centric like I mentioned, so more often than not your faction members will be there to replace your gear if you lose any. Despite the game having only one mega server for each region, the game does not have a big population by any means. So believe me when I say, people will just be grateful that you decided to show up for the fight or event regardless. And if you're just starting out, replacing your gear is going to be a hell of a lot easier. They might even drop multiple sets on you to be safe. And one quick thing I wanted to mention, like I said earlier about the non-loot buff going away 2-3 to three minutes after the objective is complete or enemies are wiped, that gives you plenty of time to either run or teleport back to the nearest spawn or capital, especially because we can recall back to the capital for free. This game goes incredibly easy on you when it comes to this aspect. 
So I just wanted to make this video because PvP MMOs normally get a bad rap for one reason or another, and this is a system I think more of them should adapt to, because you need safeguards like this to be able to cater to more players outside of the genre. And if you're interested in trying this game later this year when the full release happens or before, just know that it's not going to be nearly as grief heavy as you might think. Thanks for joining me and have a wonderful night or day.